Bob Rogers is a. Do you want me to go through all your. <laughs> no, she has a lot of titles. <laughs> R-D-H-B-S-M-S, it's a lot of yeah. better. It's a registered dental hygienist with over 40 years of clinical experience. She practices in the office of Green City Dental in Edmond, Washington. She is also owner of Washington Oral Wellness in Kirkland, Washington, and is a practicing oral facial myofunctional therapist. She is a guest lecturer and a paid dental hygiene consultant. Barbara received her dental hygiene degree from Onondaga Community College, a Bachelor of Science in Dental Auxiliary Teaching, Teacher Education from the University of North Carolina, Tuberville, and a Master of Science in Business from Hudson University in Bangor, Bank. She continued her training in myofunctional therapy from the Academy of Oral Facial Myofunctional Therapy in Los Angeles. I want to take that faster. Barbara's passion for all things dental spilled over to creating a blog, QueenofDentalHygiene.net, where you can find all matters of oral health and wellness information from unique way to prevent cavities and gum disease to airway health sleep disordered breathing, and even how to smile. She is committed to lifelong learning and is currently working to master perioscopy and pursuing laser therapy training. Barbara enjoys sharing her knowledge with school children, patients, as well as other health professionals. She encourages all her clients to look beyond toothbrush, floss, lectures and find the why to their dental problem. She won the 2019 Hugh Freedy ABHA Master Clinician Award this past June. The 2019. 2019. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I present to you Barbara Triz and she's going to teach us how to defeat dental disease in the biological way. I, I want to welcome you all to the beautiful Pacific Northwest. For the, for the first time, I get to, to sit in my own bed um, because I live just one town up. So I hope you get to enjoy our beautiful, beautiful um, state between the Puget Sound and the mountains. Um, it is truly breathtaking when, when the weather is nice, when it's not raining. So, um, and I work for um, at Taylor up in Green, Green City Dental up in Edmonds, Washington which is just north of here. And I'm happy to have my whole staff with us here. And um, it is an honor and privilege to share with you my philosophy on dental hygiene. Um, okay. Um, I, my disclosure, um, I, in addition to being a hygienist and a non-functional therapist, um, I am also a member of the IAOMT and I am chair of the Biological Hygiene Committee. So I'm looking for recruits. Um, so after you all take your dental hygiene uh, accreditation, I want to know my committee. So just so you know. And then I do write a dental hygiene blog. Um, I have about 100 blog posts on there. So I am good. I have about 50 more in my head that I need to get out on paper. So enjoy my blog and let me know what you think. So we're going to talk about how to defeat dental disease because I think that we are missing the boat. We are looking in the wrong place. And, and it's not about scraping and drilling and filling, because we continue to scrape and drill and fill, and instead we have you know, teeth that look like this. And we're going to come back to this radiograph um, in a little bit, and I'm going to show you the case study with this. Um, I think that we are failing our patients. Now, brain statistics, you know, tooth decay is at epidemic levels where well, almost half the world's population has um, dental disease, dental decay. So, untreated. Same thing with periodontal disease. You know, you and I know that every new patient that comes into your practice has bleeding gums. They have periodontal disease. And these are the patients that go to the dentist regularly. And what are we doing wrong? 
because if somebody comes in and they're brushing, they're flossing, and they're picking, and they're doing everything we recommend, and they're still bleeding, then it's on us. And for years and years, you know, I would, I would give them the floss lecture, and I would show them how to brush, and I would, and I would think, oh, God, they're so lazy. They're not doing what I asked them to do. And they would go home, and they would floss, and they would brush, and they would, you know, within an inch of that tooth's life. And, and they would come back and they would still be bleeding. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm the one who needs to change what I'm doing. Because they are still infected. And they're doing everything that I asked them to do. So I was, I felt like a fraud for years and years. Like, what am I doing wrong? And it wasn't until I found my way to biological dental hygiene that has, that my, my world has changed. And my patients are truly healthy. And so I encourage you to embrace the biological way if you're new to the biological dental, dental hygiene and really change the way you do hygiene. Because if we don't, I think that this list is going to grow and grow because the infection in the mouth doesn't stay in the mouth. You know, I, I'm also a member of AOSH and you know, I'm sure you can be in two places at once, but you know, we can't. So this is where I want to be because I want to share this with you. You know, all of the dental diseases, or all of the infections in the mouth contributing to all of these systemic diseases. You know, depression, irritable bowel, erectile dysfunction, cardiovascular. You know, like there's seven or eight cancers on this list. And, and so we've got to really up our game because the dental disease that's in the mouth doesn't stay in the mouth. So, the biological way. For those that are new to biological dental hygiene, it is a mindset. It's a way of looking at dental disease, finding the root cause. Because it is not just about scraping teeth and drilling teeth and removing plaque. We've got to dig deeper. And, and to really practice prevention. You know, as a hygienist, I am a prevention specialist. That's what they drill into us in dental hygiene school. But yeah, all we are is a cleaning machine. You know, when I first started dental hygiene, I worked uh, five days a week. I saw 10 patients a day, 50 patients a week. And by, by Friday, I said, I'm this. I'm nervous. I hate this job. This is awful. And I lasted for one year. I said, I can't do this. This is a terrible job. I am not the healer I want to be. And so I left dental hygiene. I put my scale down. I went I left it. And I got a master's in business because, like, how far away can I get from dental hygiene and healthcare? But I came back to dental hygiene because I was doing dental sales and I walked into an office that had a face contrast microscope. And I knew just enough to say, Tell me about that. And it changed my world. And I said, Can I have a job here, please? I want to work here. And so here I am, 40 years later, still in love with dental hygiene. And it is my passion. So as a member of the IOT, I was part of the beta testing group that, that tried out the um, accreditation program. And I highly recommend it for every hygienist um, because it really it gets, it's the hygienist and the doctor on the same page. You know, doctors, you can't work without your hygienist saying the same things to the patient. And you can't have your hygienist saying, yeah, you should have some fluoride, when you know how toxic fluoride is to the body. You know how, how bad it is for the bones and how it causes you know, arthritis symptoms. So you've got to be on the same page. So I encourage you to, you know, there's just so much good information here. And it was, it was you know, things that I learned a lot as well. So a little bit of history. You know, we've got to look at history because we've got to look at what happened, what changed. So in the prehistoric man, he had very little to do. He had room for 32 beautiful, healthy, straight teeth. What are we doing wrong? Because malocclusion is at epidemic levels now. Tooth decay we saw at epidemic levels, and urinalysis at epidemic levels. It wasn't until about 12, 10 to 12,000 years ago when we had started farming that the microbiome changed and tooth decay started. But prehistoric man ate really, really, really hard foods. And so whatever tooth decay he had, he ground his teeth flat. So he took care of his tooth decay ahead of time. 
And you know, he had nice, big, strong jaws and had no periodontal disease. Yes, he had calculus, but he didn't have pathologic plaque. And I mean, he had, yes, he had calculus, but it wasn't, he didn't have bone loss. So what changed? <laughs> sugar, sugar and sugar. Um, this is a photo from the back of a can of baby corn milk. First ingredient, corn syrup. Fourth ingredient is sugar, just straight on sugar. We are feeding our littlest littles food that is inflaming them right from the get-go. Is that not the saddest thing? We're setting them up for diabetes right from the beginning. And then, mushy food. Anne talked about this. Okay, I mean, our kiddos are not using their jaws. They're not growing their jaws because they're eating slurpy food that they do not need to chew. We've got to chew because that's what grows the airway. That's what grows the jaw. That's what makes room for 32 beautiful, healthy, striped teeth and sleep apnea and all of the things that sleep apnea creates cardiovascular right? disease, stroke, dementia. So we've got to start our kiddos eating hard food. If they've got two teeth and they can pick it up, they can eat it. Now, I'm not going to feed them a carrot, I'm going to feed them steamed carrots. So there's a, there's, you know, there's my lab functional therapy hack coming into play here. You know, but working with our kiddos right from the get go, because if we don't grow that jaw, we don't get them breathing through their nose, they're not going to have a healthy mouth. They're going to grow up looking like this. <coughs> you know, her mouth is open. She never uses her cheeks. Um, I, I blocked out her eyes, but they look sad. She looks tired. She looks lethargic. And look at her itty bitty little nose. She can't. She can't breathe her nose. She's got her nose is underdeveloped. You know, if you took your nose and you pinched off half the your nostrils, you couldn't breathe her either. So we've got to grow our kids so that they are healthy. So they don't have a malfunction. So dental cares, how does that fit in with this? So when I went to dental hygiene school, and when we went to dental school, we learned about uh, W.D. Miller's um, acetogenic theory of 2 decay. It's bacteria, plus acid, and sugar, and bacteria poop acid on the teeth, demineralized teeth cause 2 decay. That's what we learned. That's, that, was, that was standard. And that was what I taught my patients, and that was what you know, Schools and I taught school children, that's what I taught them. And that's not really the answer. Now, I want you to take a look at this. It's hard to see. Can we dim the lights in here a little bit, possibly? Can we dim the lights? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I want you to see. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So, you know, I look at this poor patient the new patient. And I just think, oh well, obviously, there's, there's decay on every single tooth. But I look at it, and their teeth are clean. You know, we, we see stippling, we see a nice U-shape, the pillow's flat. So this patient is working really hard at the oral hygiene. But there's myofunctional disorders going on, there's zero stomach, you can see the frothy saliva, there's airway issues, we've got recession, we've got infraction. Um, there are seven uh, five crowns, composite veneers. So this patient really cares. So when I look at this and I think, this is not an oral hygiene thing. This is much deeper. Tooth decay is about so much more than oral hygiene. Oral hygiene plays about a 20% role in tooth decay. And we are spending 100% of our time nagging them to floss and brush better and use a better toothbrush and use more fluoride and use, use floss when the real problem is somewhere else. It is in here. It's the host susceptibility, it's the microbes, it's the food, it's the food. What we put in So I'm a total dental geek. 
week, and um, this is my light reading. I'll make that slide. And if you haven't read uh, Dr. Simon and Dr. Leonora's book, uh, Dental Fluid Transport, I encourage you to, because this is a game changer. This is the root of dental disease. They did research in the 60s, and they looked at the, the dental fluid in the tooth. And they studied the teeth, and they did a lot of research on this. And, you know, we learned all this in dental hygiene school, in dental school. You know, there's fluid in the tooth, and the nerve, and, and we feed the tooth, and when we take the nerve out, the tooth gets brittle and it dies. So we need that fluid in the dental tooth tube. And that nourishes the tooth, keeps the tooth healthy. And within the tooth, you have odontoblasts. And those odontoblasts are your healing cells. And you need fat soluble vitamins to feed your odontoblasts. So your patients that have tooth decay are deficient in fat soluble vitamins. Because if you don't have fat soluble vitamins, your odontoblasts don't work. And they remineralize the tooth, they reverse tooth decay, such a concept of reversing tooth decay. How exciting is that? We have, we have the means to heal ourselves. But what Simon and Leonora's research showed was that sugar and simple carbohydrates stopped that dentinal fluid flow. So now you've got odontal blasts that can't work because they don't have the right food. They don't have the fat soluble vitamins. They don't have vitamin D. And they've got the acids and the, the, the bacteria from the mouth coming down at those tooth tubes. That's where W.B. Miller was right, but, but we had to get to the why first. And it was because of sugar. Sugar is a toxin. So as of you know, last year, when I really sat down and started studying this, like, oh my gosh, it is sugar, but not in the way we think it is. It's not sugar in the mouth, but instead sugar in the gut. It is gut dysbiosis. It is the autoimmune reaction that creates that lack of fluid flow. It is the sugar that creates that lack of fluid flow. And then those bad bacteria touch, tuck down into the, uh, into, excuse me, into the tooth. So we've got to look differently. So we've got to ask our patients about what they're eating, about how their gut is, and what's going on. Because every time you eat or drink, you're eating disease or fighting it. So it has totally changed the way I eat now, because I want to be healthy. So I look at myself and say, what can I do better? And if I can't do it, then how can I expect my patients to do it? So welcome to the world of medical because that's where we really need to be. This is not a drill and fill repairman situation, but yet a healer. And we need to work with medicine to get there. We need to collaborate because, like I said, what we do is only like 20%. We need to bring in other helpers. So I'm going to introduce you to Ellie. Ellie is a patient of ours. Ellie is nine years old. Her mother is very, very high dental. And you know, Ellie has beautiful teeth, except you can see a little something, something sneaking in here. We've done expansion on Ellie, but let me take a little close look at these ready packs. So this is pre-COVID. This is 14 months later. A little bit of decay sneaking in, just a little bit, a little bit more. 14 months later, look at what we've got. We've got a blowout, and a blowout, and a blowout. So something else is going on. And I knew it wasn't oral hygiene, because you saw how his teeth were. So I sent Dally, recommended, um, for blood work. With a uh, functional, um, with a naturopath. And they did blood work and stool work and started digging deeper because it is something else going on in the body. And you can see anything three and over is high food sensitivity. So Ellie's really sensitive to eggs, off the charts, sugar, off the charts, dairy, totally off, off the charts. 
and then wheat and gluten and gliadin and uh, you know other grains. So this is Ellie's food sensitivity. So she's not absorbing nutrients. And then we did blood work, and further blood work, and you can see that her omega three omega six ratio is off, totally off. And then something called alkaline phosphatase, totally off the charts. We need omega-3s as opposed to omega-6s. So she's either not absorbing it or she's not getting enough of the omega-3s. And then the alkaline phosphatase, I had to look it up because it's not, not in my wheelhouse. I had to find out what alkaline phosphatase does. It is an enzyme that breaks down protein. So if Ellie's not getting that protein and she can't break it down, she's not getting the fat to dissolve the fat-soluble vitamins. So our vegan patients and our vegetarian patients that are not eating animal protein are not getting the fat to dissolve those fat-soluble vitamins. And, and one of the things that it showed is that you know, the liver is damaged and then it leaks alkaline phosphate, phosphatase into the bloodstream, so there indicates a liver disease or bone disorder. This child is nine. So we would have missed this had we been in an allopathic dental office and we put stainless steel crowns on and slapped fluoride on and band-aided it because there's a much bigger problem going on here. Ellie's uh, alkaline phosphatase was 357. The highest we want is 311. So some, some big numbers here. And then the next thing that caught my eye is that Ellie has very, very, very low vitamin D. She's at 16. What I tell my patients, I want their blood work to have it between 50 and 80. So she's not getting the vitamin D that the odontoblasts need to heal. We need vitamin D for every cell in our body, and especially for tooth decay. And 2015, the Journal of Dental Research came out and said, hey, we need vitamin D for caries. Why is this not standard of protocol in every pedo office to get vitamin D levels checked? Because if we've got kiddos with aggressive tooth decay, we're missing something. And then one more thing oh, here. Our body is designed to heal itself if we give it the proper nutrition. Ellie also had a um, stool sample. And lo and behold, she has gut dysbiosis. And what showed up in her blood work is something called zonulin. And her zonulin level is 212, and it should be no more than 161. Zonulin is a protein that, that, that regulates how tight those, those gut junctions are. And again, her, her level is really high. And um, they just discovered zonulin um, and that it was connected to gut dysbiosis in the year 2000. And it, it indicates, you know, if there's leakage going on. Also, and this should be standard, and I didn't know this until my function, functional medicine doc pointed it out, is that lead levels. We should be checking lead levels. If you've got a two, two to a five-year-old with aggressive tooth decay, it may be lead. And it's passed from grandma to mom to child and it's released in the blood work of the pregnant women. So it can be you know, years and years in the family. And that was from 19, 1999, and then another study in 2015, same thing. Lead levels and heavy metal toxicity, and it indicates, um, you know, can cause tooth decay in our littlest littles. So here we are again, throwing fluoride on, stainless steel crowns, and we're pandating them. We've got to get to the root of the problem. So in order to cure dental caries, we need to look outside the mouth. We really do. It is there's so much more going on that should be part of our wheelhouse and, and framework. And we need to collaborate. We need to collaborate with a naturopath or a functional medicine doctor. We do need to talk about myofunctional disorders, uh, mouth breathing. You know, mouth breathing decreases the salivary flow, and we don't get saliva, we don't get remineralization, so, and proper jaw development and all of that. And then acid reflux and silent reflux um, when we're not breathing properly. And then uh, salivary diagnostics, get an ENT in there, 
or um, allergist and find out why we can't use our nose. Talk about nutrition. We absolutely need a functional diagnostic nutrition in with our staff, malocclusion. And then, you know, at the bottom, I, I'm still here, but what I do is worth 20% because we've got to have all our ducks in a row. We can't just do this alone. All right, periodontal disease, same thing. It is not just an oral hygiene thing. Look how clean these teeth actually are. You know, I mean, this is a dis plaque disclosed. There's not a lot of plaque on these teeth. But yet, there's something going on here. This is really heavy bleeding. And when you see leaky gums, I think leaky arteries, I think leaky brain, leaky gut. And it, it just, you know, it's all connected. We've got to get the mouth back onto the body. We can't just put it over here and clean it and then send them on their way. So again, periodontal disease is a symptom of a much, much, much bigger problem. It is, you know, all of these things put together. It is not just about plaque and calculus sitting on the teeth. They're there as a result of a dysbiosis in the gut, and then that gut changes the microbiome in the mouth, and unless we heal the gut, we're not going to heal the mouth. And prophies by themselves do not make an unhealthy mouth healthy. Now, I had to wrap my head around this because, like, I am a hygienist. I want to, if I clean the teeth, you know, again, that will make the mouth healthy. But it doesn't. They're healthy for, you know, uh, 24 hours. Not even healthy. Their mouth is clean for 24 hours. But you and I have seen, you know, uh, Dr. Costerton's video of how quickly that microbiome reestablishes itself, 24 hours. It is back to the way it was yesterday, unless we change something else. So I talk with my patients about food, nutrition, uh, eating the rainbow, eating the periphery of the grocery store, not eating box food, franken food, chemicals. You know, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Just saying. Um, but eating fermented foods, high fiber, prebiotic foods, and then really talking with our moms about breastfeeding. You know, I, I, breastfeeding just isn't encouraged. So we, as a profession, need to do that as well. Because that the breastfeeding teaches the tongue to go on the roof of the mouth. It uses those muscles and pumps the parotid glands. And it gets the salivary digestive enzymes. Because if you don't have the salivary digestive enzymes, then the gut and, the, and, and getting the food out of the other end doesn't work as well. So we need all of this body to work together. And my hero, Dr. Weston Price, you know, I, he was not, never talked about in dental hygiene school. And it wasn't until about 10 years ago when I stumbled on, on his work, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is my, the beginning of my journey of being a biological hygienist. You know, we need that good, healthy food. And just so, I, you know, again, when I, it wasn't until I started working at Green City Dental that I learned about prebiotics. Like, oh, there's so many things I don't know. And I'm just like, why don't I know this stuff? So I want to share this with you. You know, we need prebiotics to, uh, they're non-digestible carbohydrates, feeding the good bacteria in the gut and in the mouth. And so, you know, just good, healthy food. Apples and bananas and garlic and jicama. And then these are the vitamins that we need for good, healthy uh, oral cavity. Just A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, F fatty acids, uh, vitamin F, and magnesium, boron, zinc, CoQ10, salt, and vitamin K2. We need all of those. So I don't tell my patients to supplement. I want them to have blood work so that they supplement properly. And so these are the things that just help grow a good garden of good microbes in the, in the gut and in the mouth. Um, you know, diet, prebiotics, probiotics. Yes, oral hygiene, um, supplements. We want to lower inflammation. So sugar. Sugar is a big key factor in that. And in order to heal the mouth, we've got to boost the immune system. So what do I do for my 20%? I test, I teach, I treat, repeat. That is my goal. Testing. I use a phase contrast microscope with every single patient 
every single time they see me. I've used a face contrast microscope since 1985. I had the, uh, the pleasure and the opportunity to sit next to Dr. Paul Kais um, in 1988 uh, at lunch, and, and, and it just changed my world. I just, I cannot function without a face contrast microscope. It just, it gets the patient enrolled, gets me excited, and I fell in love with hygiene because of it. Because when you look at a slide that looks like that, you know that there's dental disease. And the thing is, the patient can brush really well, and they can camouflage this. They can hide this. I have seen slides like this on a five-year-old. Spirochetes, which is what you're seeing on here, all these squiggly guys. Those are all spirochetes. Spirochetes are connected to dementia and cardiovascular disease. They have found it in the joints, uh, synovial fluid of arthrit our rheumatoid arthritis. Spirochetes are a bad actor. And spirochetes' best friend is Porphyrmonas gingivalis. And PG and spirochetes, and there are 57 different varieties of spirochetes, so, yes, we can test for a few of them, but we can't test for all of them. And so, you know, we've got to, you've got to see it. You've got, once you see it, seeing is believing. And Dr. Kai says a hygienist without a microscope is like a doctor without a stethoscope. I mean, can you go to the doctor without a stethoscope? Would you? I wouldn't trust one. Oh, hold on. Sorry. And, you know, using the microscope, it doesn't take long. You know, I've trained my patients, you know, from the get-go. We're going to take a plaque sample. We're going to look at it at the end. And I just, when I'm doing my oral cancer screening and I'm doing my caries check and I'm looking around, I'm also taking a plaque sample, put it on the slide, put it off to the side. And the patients sometimes don't even know that I've done it. And they ask me, so did you take a slide? Did you take a slide? Are we going to look at my bugs today? And they're excited about it because they want to see their hard work rewarded. And so it doesn't take me but, you know, like two or three minutes to go through this the first time. So what I, hold on, you know, I have this poster right by the microscope, and I just tell them, you know, a healthy slide, you're going to have plaque. Plaque is healthy until it's not. We need plaque. It buffers the acids. It, it remineralizes the tooth. It protects the tooth. It is important. But when it becomes pathologic, then it's going to look wild and crazy, and they're going to wave at us. But a healthy slide, we have cocci, there's the stationary, and then I look at motility, variety, and quantity. And the crazier the slide is, the more aggressive the disease is, then I know we have to also be more aggressive. And the thing is, it takes less than one minute for these bacteria to enter the bloodstream and hit every part of the body. So, you know, patients get it. They know. I mean, they, they're coming to us because they want to be healthy. I mean, look at how aggressive these spirochetes are. They're organized. They're attacking. The spirochetes don't die when they go in the bloodstream. And I have... Oh. oh. All right. Well, that was there earlier. Let's see if I can refresh it. Um, I don't know. All right. Well, you're gonna, I, I can show you this video afterwards. It's okay. It's all right. Um, I should have checked that, so I apologize. But, um, you know, the, what, what this video is is just a blood taken from, you know, somebody's artery, and it's full of spirochetes. And so the spirochetes don't die just because they go into the bloodstream. So you've got to test. So if you don't have a microscope, do salivary diagnostics. You know, but I encourage you to do both because this gives you more information, you know, what is happening in the pocket. And, and then you get to see what, you know, the red complex, the yellow complex, the orange complex, the green complex, what is in there, so that you can quantify it, so that you have, have you know, just like a medical doctor, test and do your therapy and then find the answer and then check them again. 
and we use all manner of different tests in our office. This one is a local lab, um, Phyta Lab. It just depends on what I'm looking for, what I think I need as to what labs we use. So, you know, periopathogens, carry pathogens, viruses, halitosis pathogens, candida, and then genetics. There's lots of information on these lab tests. And we can do salivary diagnostics here. And, and Phyta Lab gives me a score so that I know, you know, about where the patient is. Anything over 50 is high risk. This patient is almost 4,000. So we've got, you know, we've, so we've got a high bacteria load, and so that contributes to why they have tooth decay. But, you know, why is, why is that, why is the body allowing that microbiome to be that aggressive? That's what makes me go deeper. And then the other test that I do is nitric oxide. And nitric oxide, without nitric oxide, we can't heal. So it's a real simple test, um, but I do it on all my new patients. And here is, you know, it's just a little spit on the stick. And I'm happy to say that's my test. But when I first started doing this a year ago, I was like uh, down here, very, very, very pale. And, and you know, I, I want to be healthy. My goal is a healthy 100. So I'm taking care of my own body and, and increasing my nitric oxide. And I'm excited, so excited to hear Dr. Nathan Bryan talk because, you know, I want to learn more about nitric oxide. Um, but, you know, these, these are uh, staff members. And what this also tells me is that the way you make nitric oxide, you, you make it in your paranasal sinuses, and then you also make it from the foods you eat that come out of your saliva and unite with the bacteria on the back of your tongue. And then you swallow it. So this tells me that I have the good bacteria on the back of my tongue. So just an easy, quick test, and, and we'll know if your patient has the good bacteria. Because we need good bacteria. So then I teach them, or I teach them, I want to keep them super simple. I don't want some convoluted 20-minute routine in the bathroom. It's like, what are you doing in there for 20 minutes? Um, I want it five minutes max. And I want to get those teeth clean every 12 hours, because I do want to reduce the pathologic bacteria on the tongue and in the mouth. So electric toothbrushes, absolutely. Um, you know, when we're my, this is Microsoft land. There's, there's so much tech here. And probably 75% of my patients have a manual toothbrush. It's like, we've got we to gotta up our game here. Join the 21st century. Um, total oral irrigation and um, water pick has a sonic fusion electric toothbrush water pick combo. That is outstanding. It's one and done. It's like, how can we get it any easier? You know, I want to keep it simple so that they will do it every day. And approximal brushes. And then toothpaste. Toothpaste has got to do a job for me. Um, otherwise, it's just a cosmetic. I want it to remineralize. I want it to kill the bad bacteria. I want it to raise the pH. I want it to put prebiotics and probiotics in the mouth. So toothpaste for me has to be a medicine. And then I want them to brush, spit, don't rinse. Let's leave it in there. Let's raise the pH. I do have a scrubby floss that I recommend but I'm going to write a blog post titled Stop Flossing because so many of our patients are flossing incorrectly. They're using the stick floss, they're cutting their gums, they're causing more inflammation than they're fixing. So let's use better tools like the interproximal brushes and the water irrigation. I send them home with tubs of ozone oil. You know, I love ozone. It is oxygen. These are anaerobic bacteria. Let's get oxygen underneath the gum line. Dip the pixter, work it in. Let's raise the pH. Let's kill the bad bacteria. And then disclosing tablets because I want them to see what they're missing. And then clean their tongue. The tongue, if we're not cleaning the tongue, then we're putting the bacteria right back in the mouth and on the teeth again. So then I treat. What do I do? My goal is to change the microbiome, bottom line. How do I raise the pH, change the microbiome? We've got to feed the good bacteria. We've got to you know, deal with the gut dysbiosis, creating homeostasis, remineralize the teeth, and establish nasal breathing. If we don't have nasal breathing, nothing else matters. We've got to breathe through the nose, get the tongue on the roof of the mouth, and lips together, and use our nose. Teach our patients how to use their nose. 
So what I do, you know, I want, you know, a biological office, obviously, salivary diagnostics, face contrast microscopy, and carry screening from the, um, uh, so that I can test chair side. We're talking about food and look at the dysbiosis in the gut, reduce that pathological biofilm. I see patients every three months. They, in order for them to go six months, is, um, you know, they've got to earn that from me. They've got to. Um, if they're bleeding, I don't want them to go six months. I want to see them in two weeks or a week. I want to keep an eye on them. If they've got an infection, why would I say I'll see you in six months? Because that infection goes to their brain, their gut, their joints, all the rest of their body. I want to do um, gum therapy. I call it gum therapy. I use a laser. I use ozone. I use a face contrast microscopy. Um, talk, I teach them how to clear their nose and use their nose. I want them to see their primary care physician and have that blood work and gut work and allergies and food sensitivity. And then I'm, I'm learning about functional nutritionist. I'm thinking I'm going to go do that course too, like I don't have enough to do. Um, but I want to learn more about food because it all depends on food. And it depends on the tongue. You know, the mighty tongue rules them all. So if you don't know about myofunctional therapy and myofunctional disorders, I encourage you to learn it. Because if the tongue isn't in the right place, then everything else is off. And we have mouth breathing. We have a mouth that looks like this. Heavy wear, ab fraction, recession. It's all because of the tongue. And the tongue is connected to the fascia all the way down to the toes. So the tongue is the mighty ruler of the whole body. So my goal is not to strip and sterilize. I don't want to nuke all the bacteria. I want to feed the good bacteria. And I love this slide. This is just an awesome slide. Um, I'm, I'm really glad it's not in my mouth. But you can see amoebas just oozing across the screen. This is all spirochetes and just white blood cells, red blood cells, spinning rods, gliding rods, you name it. The only thing that's on, not on here is trichomonads. Everything else is on here. And that's why I love the microscope, because it really shows you what's going on. I use an air polisher. I use piezo scalers. I want to disrupt that biofilm. I want to go sub-G and change that microbiome. I do perioscopy when it's needed. I don't want to scrape the heck out of those roots. Let's be gentle. Let's scrape just where we need it, get the calculus out of there, and put ozone oil in there. And the thing is, nobody talks about this, is that they're pathogens resistant to scaling and root planing. So we can scrape the heck out of teeth, but we're missing the red complex and the orange complex bacteria, and these are the bad guys. So how do you get them? Ozone gas and laser therapy. We've got to get in there with the laser. And I have a little chair side unit, and then we use the big longevity unit as well. And this is what a healthy mouth. All right, you don't get to see the healthy mouth. I'm sorry. I apologize. So my goal is no bad plaque, no calculus, no bleeding. My line in the sand, I tell patients, no bleeding gums. I want no cavities, no recession, and no bad breath. So we can defeat descendal disease, test, teach, treat, repeat, until you get a healthy mouth, a healthy slide, get to the root of the problem, and it's not in the mouth. You need to collaborate, find, the, find, your, find your tribe of healthcare professionals. Address those myofunctional disorders. I didn't talk at all about stress, but the emotional and the spiritual side is just as important. You know, if we've got cortisol flowing through the body and stress, we're not going to heal as well. So we've got to deal with that. And then I encourage you to equip your hygienist with the very best tools and the very best knowledge and be passionate about it. And like I have, thankfully, 90 minutes to see a patient. And, and, and I can spend more time with them and educate them. And when I, you know, I drive my own schedule. It's like, do I need 60 minutes? Do I need 90 minutes? But the patients are healthy because I have the time to spend with them because I am a profession, prevention specialist. I don't have to rush through. I don't have to skip steps. I get in there and I really educate the patient on how important this is. 
My goal is a healthy mouth and a healthy body, healthy brain, healthy life. And we did it. Yay. So, thank you. Any questions? Okay. Do I recommend brushing the tongue with ozonated oil? I, what I have my patients do is use a tongue sweeper, which is a metal tool to scrape the tongue. I mean, I love ozone, and I love ozone oil, but I, 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 it just would make me gag. So if I can't use it um, in massive quantities in my mouth, I can't ask them to do it. But there is a Dr. Weeder's tongue brush, and uh, Dr. Weeder makes a nice, gentle tongue gel. And so something like that I would do. I mean, if you can use ozone oil on your tongue, you go, girl. I just, I, uh, I, I it would make me gag. And so a little ozone goes a long way. So that's my, that, you know, if I can't do it, I can't ask somebody else to do it. So, yes? Is there any specific brand of probiotics, like oral probiotics that you use the most? The, so the toothpaste that I like are um, dental sidin. That kills the, the bad bacteria but doesn't hurt the good bacteria. It's all bio, biobotanical and all natural. Um, I like plain old baking soda. And uh, there's a baking soda tablets called Alka Whites. I like those. I like um, uh, what else? Revitin. Revitin is a prebiotic toothpaste, so it feeds the good bacteria um, in in the mouth. So, and then um, I also like Risewell, which has nanohydroxy particles in. So we can uh, Risewell. And they make, uh, Risewell also makes a scrubby floss that has nanohydroxy particles in this floss. So it's a fluffy floss. So your patients that do floss properly, yes, floss. 